live in a generation where you only get validation if you show the receipts. Not. Even superheroes are no exception to this. There ain't no love for puny gods in today's TikTok climate, you know. Now, if we're gonna get into power territory, then you know the TV region has you covered. So today, I'm giving you my top 25 superhero feats of strength in the movies. There's grade A badass behavior, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger shouting his iconic get to the chopper line in Predator. Then there's S tier flexing, such as Ghost Rider getting the chopper to him. Now I'm a diehard Nicolas Cage fan and nothing in the world is gonna change my opinion on that. So when I saw Ghost Rider all the way back in 2007, I absolutely loved it. And the movie still remains one of my guilty pleasures to this day. This is a character who doesn't need to prove his strength but if you ever doubt him, then take a look at the scene where he grabs a freaking helicopter and pulls it towards him. Bro made the freaking pilot apologize to him before flinging him away like a spare key. Honestly though, the cops should have known what they were getting into. You'd either have to be a maniac or a rookie to be chasing a skeleton with flames. Spider-Man has a strange history with modes of transport. He barely managed to stop a speeding train back in 2004, and here he was only 98% successful in holding the Staten Island Ferry together. I was actually considering putting this higher up on the list, but Spidey does depend on Iron Man for a last minute save, so it's not exactly a solo effort, is it? Not to be mean, but it was also his fault for being naive about fighting the Vulture. Despite my criticisms though, I can't deny the fact that the kid has got commendable strength. He might have failed the overall mission, but was still able to keep a giant ferry from falling apart using nothing more than his bare hands. Uh, I mean, webs, I suppose. Also, what's up with Michael Keaton's dressing speed being faster than my internet connection? I mean, seriously, the man changes his costume so quickly that he might even be able to compete against the likes of Ariana Grande or Taylor Swift. Hey, Mr. Stark, can I do anything? What do you want me to do? I think you've done enough. Fantastic Four are mostly known for being a team, and we see that in full effect when they save the London Eye from being destroyed. However, while people like Susan Storm and the Human Torch have their special abilities to rely on, the thing is all about brute strength, and he makes his mark by keeping the London Eye stable. First of all, I want to say that he's been given a very lazy name. Like, what on earth were you thinking when you named a freaking brick man the thing? I've always felt that the man needs more credit, and this is one of those moments where he makes sure he earns it. On a separate note, I just feel weird seeing Chris Evans in any role apart from Captain America. Sure, Johnny Storm is pretty badass in his own right, but he doesn't have America's butt. As far as I'm concerned, that's America's ass. We've got to stick to the plan and work as a team. Oh, so we're a team now. That's news to me. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Look, we were going to tell you guys. When were you going to tell us? When you moved our stuff out of the Baxter building? Johnny, this really isn't a good time. Kid's got a point, Reed. You should have told us. All right, all right. We all know Dwayne Johnson for his epic antics, right? When he's not doing questionable skits for WWE, he's busy lifting weights and looking ripped. Now the scene I'm talking about here has him as Black Adam lifting a giant statue, which is impressive enough already. However, I wouldn't be surprised if The Rock could do that even without the benefit of added superpowers. Overall, this scene is pretty straightforward and presents the character in what most would consider to be his natural element. The real reason why he makes it to my list is because of how effortless the whole thing looks. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we'd normally associate with Superman, so I think it's safe to say that Black Adam has proven himself to be at least an equal in terms of strength. Man, if only this movie made more money at the box office, we would have seen such an epic showdown. Yeah, 
Yes, we all love to hate Brie Larson, there's no two ways about it. However, I'm not here to talk down on her or the inevitable fate of the Marvels, I'm just going to focus on how she managed to give Thanos a run for his money in Avengers Endgame. We all know that Captain Marvel is supposed to be the most overpowered character in the MCU, so it was safe to assume that she could put up a fight against the Mad Titan. Look, I know how it ends, so I don't need you to spell it out in the comments, but even then, she looked ridiculously strong during their encounter. Not only did she stop him from snapping the first time, Captain Marvel also took a couple of direct hits and didn't even flinch. I mean, that's pretty badass if you ask me, but we needed a dramatic finale, so the overall result wasn't what we expected. Well, we're talking about superheroes proving their strength, aren't we? So I suppose we're bound to see a Superman entry somewhere, right? This particular scene is pretty short and actually part of a montage of instances where we see what the Man of Steel is truly capable of. I know many might go gaga over guys like Thor or the Hulk with their impressive displays of strength, but let's be serious here. There's no way they can compare to what Kal-El can achieve. I mean, just look at this. Bro's dragging an entire ship across ice with minimum effort. That's got to be at least a thousand tons of force that he's using to move that thing and even then it's just another day in the office for Clark Kent. It's also kind of ironic that this moment is put in between a boring speech about the need for superheroes like him. He's literally proving their point wrong simply by doing his job. We've always created icons in our own image. What we've done is we project ourselves onto him. The fact is maybe he's not some sort of devil or Jesus. If Superman made his way onto this list, then it was only a matter of time before Batman did as well. Now, I want to kick things off by acknowledging that Bruce Wayne is by no means a hyper-powered alien lord with an endless supply of abilities. He's a normal human being, just like you and me. Well, I mean, actually, he's a billionaire, so, I mean, there are some differences. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that you don't need such powers to become a hero. Grit and determination are good enough, as can be seen in the mountain climbing scene of Batman Begins. Bro went all out with a broken back and had to face all kinds of obstacles, but he never gave up and finally got what he wanted. I personally love how Nolan pushes the mythical nature of Batman here. The man literally has to climb a mountain to transform himself into an agent of justice, and for some reason, it just all makes perfect sense. Here you face death! I did just mention that the angry green giant doesn't measure up to Superman and I do still stand by my words. However, it would be criminal for me not to include this seed, mainly because it shows how the Hulk can still come out on top even when the chips are down. Think about it, the man just fried his arm in the process of reviving half the universe. Then, he has the entire Avengers headquarters crumble on top of him. Despite this, he's still able to lift all the rubble above him and take part in the epic finale. We all know what the Hulk is capable of, but we've never really seen him overcome an adverse situation with such dominance. I know I keep making fun of this softer MCU version, but I need to give credit where credit is due. Don't move him. Find boyfriends like this on Instagram, that's for sure. Oh, heads up, watch out! Oh, oh. Woo. Okay, okay, there you go. You okay? You alright? Just Spider-Man. Fasten gives it away, huh? Look, this is pretty important, Max. Max, how do you know my name? It's written on your badge. I'm a nobody. Hey, you're not a nobody. You're somebody. Like that. The title for Strongest Avenger is still up for grabs, and even now, the main contenders are our very own Thor and Hulk. These two have a special kind of relationship that can't be limited to friendships or rivalries. There are levels to their dynamic, and it all began in the very first Avengers movie back in 2012. 
The first encounter between the God of Thunder and the angry green giant gave us a lot of entertainment, but what I particularly loved was the way Thor stood up to Hulk and even blocked his punches, despite the obvious difference in mass. It showcases his faith in his abilities, and that's exactly why I've always maintained that size doesn't matter. Yeah, sure, Hulk got the last laugh with that sneak punch during the Battle of New York, but I don't count cheap moves, okay? Yeah, yeah, Aquaman's a weirdo who loves to do inexplicable things to marine life. That's what the internet memes want you to believe, don't they? Well, let me tell you something, they're all wrong. I mean, Aquaman is the highest grossing DC movie as of today for a reason, and it's not just because of Jason Momoa and his abs. He's a badass hero with amazing strength and skills. I'll even go far enough to declare that he's the Superman of the Seven Seas. If you don't believe what I'm saying, then just take a look at how he lifts an entire freaking submarine without the slightest difficulty. There's not just the weight of the vessel here, he's also got to deal with the resistance of the water, and on top of that, Bro doesn't even have a floor or anything to push against. See, I always make sure these characters earn their entries. These were the good old days, weren't they? Will Smith was still a fan favourite and nobody could find a single scandal on him. Now, if you've seen this film, please let me know if you agree with this statement, okay? I believe that Hancock is what a superhero would become in reality, stressed out to the point of him not giving a single damn anymore. I mean, it's basically what The Boys is all about and you love that show, don't you? Comedy aside, Hancock is essentially black Superman and his strength speaks volumes for what he's capable of. Bro lifted a freaking whale and flung it into the ocean as if he was throwing a frisbee or something. Of course, what stood out even further was the fact that he had the whole ocean to aim at, and yet Hancock flung the whale exactly at that one unfortunate boat. Like, how do you even achieve something like that? It's impressive and hilarious at the same time. Oh, now he's big and angry, huh? Kids these days don't know how hard this movie smashed the box office because it was when Tobey Maguire was the only live-action Spider-Man. He was the biggest name in the industry by virtue of this one role, and now he's translated his success into an everlasting legacy. Now that I'm done with my fanboy moment, let's talk about his impressive strength. Remember when he held a whole metal wall just to protect his dear Mary Jane? Yeah, I think that's more than enough to justify his inclusion here. Apart from MJ's strange faces that stretch the scene a lot longer than expected, I want to highlight Peter Parker's expressions as well. Bro's so smitten that he doesn't even realise the immense burden he's resisting. Come to think of it, one of Spider-Man's key characteristics does seem to be simping. Also, huge shout out to Doc Ock for his sacrifice. The man lived as a villain and died as a hero. again and it's a scene that really got the crowd going when they first saw him. 
The Hulk has shown time and time again why he's known for his strength, but sometimes you've got to come up with innovative ways to remind the world why you're the angry green giant. In this case, it's Taika Waititi's Thor Ragnarok where he showcases his might. If you really think about it, Fenrir was the first ever beast to make Hulk bleed in the MCU. It just makes this whole moment of domination that much more special. What really gets me though is when you realise that Bruce Banner was never scared of coming back if he became Hulk again. Yet, he was totally willing to jump into such a situation knowing that only Hulk could take care of it and he would probably be cool to never come back as Bruce. That's the ultimate declaration of strength, so don't let the comic elements of this film fool you. Everything's gonna be alright now, I got this. You wanted to know who I am? What the hell are you talking about? You'll see! Step aside, Homelander, let your daddy show you how it's done. <laughs> Superman Returns isn't just an underrated gem, it's a getaway into an alternative perspective of the Man of Steel. Forget about the strength, we already know his power level. I mean, he separates a freaking spacecraft from an airplane, and after sorting that out, he comes back to stop the plane from crashing into a stadium. It's the intent that makes me want to revisit this scene as many times as I can. I love how he sees the plane collapsing and completely on fire, plummeting down to Earth almost as fast as him, but he doesn't panic or even look stressed. Kal-El remains cool and collected and does his best to go after the plane, confident that he can save every passenger. That's Superman for you, ladies and gentlemen. We're in top 10 territory now, so expect classics like the one I'm about to talk about now. Tony Stark is a complete visionary. He became friends with the Hulk and immediately built a counter-attack strategy against him. To be fair, he did collaborate with Bruce Banner on it, but still, you can't help but appreciate the foresight of his genius. Another aspect worthy of admiration is the way Iron Man's Hulkbuster armor manages to subdue the angry green giant after an epic battle of gigantic proportions. My personal highlight was the way he finally knocks out his opponent with that final punch. After all those plasma blasts, mega punches, buildings and counter-attacks, a man finally comes out on top with a simple smash as if he's one punch man. I'm sorry. Sometimes strength isn't about physical power or endurance, sometimes it's about the boundaries you're willing to push for the sake of common good. Enter Captain America, the man who can make anyone's morals look small. The final battle against Thanos in Infinity War might have resulted in failure for our heroes, but that didn't stop Steve Rogers from giving everything he had against the Mad Titan. He's just a super soldier at the end of the day, but he still managed to resist Thanos for as long as he could, just to give Wanda a few more seconds to destroy the Mind Stone. I also love how Thanos just takes Cap's punches before knocking him out. He admires his will, and that in itself is a mark of respect. Where'd he go? Four. Where'd he go? Steve?
of strength across his cinematic history. This time, we're hitting up Henry Cavill once again as he saves his co-workers against a falling oil rig. Normally, this kind of situation wouldn't be so high up on my list, but it's the context that elevates the overall impact here. It's the first time we get to see Clark Kent show off his powers for the greater good as an adult, and it serves as a stepping stone leading into what we eventually get in the big finale of the film. The Man of Steel always operates at the highest possible level, he never ever discriminates between missions, and that's what makes him an icon for people everywhere. Sometimes I surprise myself with entries like this. The destruction of Sokovia is a grand scale event that should be highlighted more often because, come on, the annihilation of a freaking country is pretty badass. Now, technically speaking, Iron Man serves a pretty heavy assist here, but he was the main hero in the first Avengers film, so I want to focus more on Thor. After all, he's the one who delivers the final blow with Mjolnir. Man, I totally loved how both these legends came together to completely shatter the whole of Sokovia. It was a visual masterpiece. Okay, I just realized I'm glamorizing the act of blowing up countries. Maybe it's because I've watched Oppenheimer way too many times in the theaters. Choppers seem to be the craze in this video, eh? Before I go ahead, I want to take a moment here to stomp and appreciate the wonders of the human physique. We've seen some extremely fit bodybuilders like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone and Dwayne Johnson who've shown us how strong we can be. Then there's Steve Rogers, who puts them all to shame in this one single scene. It's kind of hard to put a power level on the man, considering he's never really won against an overpowered opponent without assistance. In this sequence though, Bro holds off a whole chopper by himself and it's absolutely thrilling to watch. Just look at that gigantic bicep, the thing's the size of a freaking head. Even Bucky couldn't help but just gaze in shock and awe at his long lost buddy's muscles. He does this in both the Justice League films, but I want to specifically use the Snyder Cut because the context, build up, and payoff are all so much better. First things first, Kal-El dominates Steppenwolf like he's a little puppy, and after a bit of a time reversal situation, he goes on to separate the mother boxes with sheer force and a little assistance from Cyborg. I don't think I need to tell you how much power it takes to pull off a feat like that. Apart from foiling the anti-life equation, Superman also indirectly challenged Darkseid to a showdown and the brief stare they shared towards the end of the final battle gave us a lot of hope. Unfortunately, that was as good as it got because the true villain of DC wasn't Darkseid, it was James Gunn all along. This 
this scene has found its way into my top five way too many times and has continued to maintain its consistency because of the amazing direction, acting and writing it displays. The train scene from Spider-Man 2 will forever remain Tobey Maguire's magnum opus because there's no other moment where Peter Parker's values and essence as a character are better portrayed. He's a symbol of heroism and self-learning, which is exactly what Sam Raimi wanted to show us with his sacrificial act. Of course, it's also a tremendous display of strength from the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, and that's the main reason why I'm even talking about it in the first place. Side note, Toby really had the best screams. They're so realistic and raw, you can almost feel his pain. And that's why he's always gonna be my number one Spidey. <laughs> You knew this was coming and so did I. It was just the placement that I needed to get right. Having said that, I think number three is an appropriate fit because I've already shown it tons of love throughout my other videos. I still maintain that this is the best scene involving the MCU Hulk because we see his rage and his power all in the span of five business seconds. Bro punched a freak in space world and took it down without any signs of distress. That's how you do guys like Saitama proud. Honestly speaking though, that Leviathan was just being set up by Iron Man. Even Tony knew how the whole thing was gonna play out and Bruce paid back the faith instantly. And Hulk. <sighs> Smash. <sighs> Strength is good enough on its own, what about when it's used against a weakness? It's what we see in Superman Returns when Clark Kent lifts an entire freaking island that's filled with kryptonite. First of all, I would have put him here even if he just lifted the island normally, but the fact that he was fighting against his key weakness while doing so made me elevate him all the way up to number two. His strength is really something that can't be explained in words, no matter how many videos I get to do of him. Heck, even if all the academic scholars of the world got together, they still wouldn't be able to do justice to his heroics. Sometimes, I really wonder how it would have ended up if Brandon Routh served as the DCEU's Man of Steel. If somebody tells you, baby you're a star, you should confirm what kind of star they're talking about. If it's the kind of star that can create weapons like Stormbreaker, that's when you know they're being genuine. Thor has always been on the stronger side of the MCU's roster, but his moment of truth with the collapsing star at Nidavellir cemented him as a force to be reckoned with. Bro took on the full might of a celestial body, all so that he could get revenge for what Thanos did to him and his friends. The God of Thunder really outdid himself with this one, and he completely deserves to take the crown today. Go on, Chris, go enjoy some beers, it's on me. Now that you like this video, please check out this next video.